Hi guys. Okay. Welcome back to Freeze Drying Mama. Now it's been quite a while since I put up a video and here's why. You're going to see in the next few minutes a lot of the things that I've done to try to get my vacuum back. I've had the vacuum error come on a lot. What happened is we moved for, you know, and then I, I didn't run it for five to six months, well, about five months because I was waiting for, I don't know, I was waiting for things to get back into track in my life. You know, we're trying to find room to put things. We're completely remodeling this house that we bought. The reasons are endless, right? So the reasons are endless of what's been going on. Um, essentially what it comes down to is I started my freeze dryer back up um, in April when my warranty went out March, um, which is fine, whatever, that was my thing. And I've run my machine so much, this is totally fine. Um, I'm not of the belief that a freeze dryer should come to us perfectly because it's not Harvest Right fault how it's shipped. Um, they actually do a really good job of packaging it, but I've seen the way that they're treated, that these, mach that these machines are treated in transit. And it's hard, I mean, it's really hard that it's going from truck to truck, it's being bounced around. You know, I've seen the, the, um, the terrific delivery people, usually with FedEx, and they get out and they try to help out. Um, I've, I've heard a lot of stories about people who have had um, an opportunity to actually have the FedEx gentlemen come out or the, the ladies and they help them. They help them unbox it. They check things over. They try to make sure that the checklist is getting hit, you know, because they know it's an, it's an expensive thing. And a lot of people are buying these right now. This is great. I'm super proud of everybody who's buying them and trying to take care of their future to feed their families. That's great. But what it comes back down to is I totally expected to pay to fix some of my machine especially after we moved it 1800 miles from home. It's been through a lot, but anyways, okay. So I went through, um, <laughs> quite a few things here. I'll let my videos explain it to you. The first one is my son and I are going to take off the whole outside and exteriors and whatever of the vacuum, um, or of the freeze dryer. I'm going to show you how to do it. We're checking certain things and then I changed the actual um, vacuum sensor, okay? Um, I'll put the links to some of these um, other videos that I use from Harvest Right in the comments or in the description so you can see where I got the information from and kind of see how I did it. The guy that explains it does a very good job. Um, but that's what I did first, okay? Another thing that I did is I went through everything and I, I changed out the gasket. That was another thing that I did. Maybe that was first. I, it has been crazy. So I did that. And then um, I checked all the hoses. I checked the epoxy. I checked the sensors. I checked the, um, I did the little squirting thing with the Windex. Um, I did all the things. Okay. So why don't, if you want, you can go ahead and check those out right now. I'm going to break to that. If you want to skip um, those, uh, just so you can kind of see what I'm, you know, what actually happened and what it ended up being the problem. Um, you can skip down in the descriptions. There will be what's called chapters and you'll be able to see what each section is and you can just click to the section that pertains to what it is exactly you're looking for. But the next couple um, minutes of the video are going to be literally me talking about the different ways that I have been looking at the machine, the ways that I've been diagnosing it, the things that I was wrong with, the things that I wasn't wrong with so on and so forth. Okay. So there are a lot of things that I cover that will and could help you with your vacuum error. Um, at the end of those video, at the end of those snippets of videos that I've done, um, I'm going to actually cover what actually happened and what actually fixed it. Okay. All right. So go check those out and, um, don't do any, you don't have to go anywhere. Or like I said, you can go down in the descriptions and then click the minute and it'll take you to the next part. Okay. As most of you know, when you first get your freeze dryer and you have to do all this work to get it up and running the way it needs to be, that's because of a bunch of different things. They've shipped it to you, um, the setup process. I mean, this is this really is an elegant machine and when they ship it to you, it goes through FedEx's hands or it goes through UPS hands or whoever is whoever is shipping it, right? And we know that they're not always careful. They've got a lot that they're that they're dealing with. These delivery these delivery people do. So, you know, pulling it off, hitting the bumps, flying, wherever they're doing, those boxes, even though they're on pallets and even though they're packed well, they still face some hard times. We'll, we'll just call them that, hard times. You can hear my pump in the background. It's been working. I've had that one for a long time. I love my standard pump. 
Uh, I'll probably never go premium unless maybe someone sends me one for free with all the oil that goes with it because as you know I really like Dairyland oil with my standard pump. However, I have the standard pump from a few years ago, not the one that they're pushing now saying that's only Robin Air. So make sure that you know which one, you're, which one you have before you take my recommendation for the oil. Anyway, back on track. So the last couple weeks, um, so I got a load done and then I remember telling you, okay, we had this going on and this going on and I was able to get a load in. Now, um, that, that load that I put in of broccoli and peas, because I did frozen broccoli and frozen peas, I couldn't get a vacuum. It took me forever, like I was, it would t go down to about 800 and then I'd feel confident and I'd leave and I'd come back and it'd be sitting at 2300 mTOR. 2300 mTOR isn't going to dry nothing. Okay, so I was frustrated and so I looked at it. I looked at all of the options. One of the options was a gasket and we're going to look at that. Okay, so now that we've seen the differences between the two gaskets and I did order some a new gasket, you have to order those from... Um, Harvest right, you have to call them and order it. They don't offer it online, so you have to call them and order it. It's about $46 last time when I just last paid for it. That was like with shipping and everything. Might be up. We've got inflation. Okay, so the gasket, I replaced the gasket. I thought, okay, that that's going to work. It went down to 900 and then back up. Okay, then I'm going to show you what my husband did. And it worked for a little bit, but then it didn't work. And then I'm going to show you what I did, and it's now sitting at 380 mTOR. So I'm going, to sh I'm going to show you what I did. So first I'm going to show you what my husband did. And Frosty's working right now, so bear with me in the noise. Okay, so I just said Frosty's working. 373. Keep going, Frosty. You're doing good. Okay, so as you can see right here, my husband took electrical tape and wrapped it around. Really, look at how nice and perfect that is. He's so cute. Okay, so he wrapped it around there and that actually made a tighter seal for the door. But it still wasn't getting, it was getting this part, this nice flat line that we like for the gasket, but something was happening. And I'll tell you what I did, because that wasn't working. So what I had to do is I had to pull out my Allen wrenches. Okay, and my husband tightened these right here, this one, and this one down here, this bottom one. And I tighten this one right here. And then I thought, okay, well, you know what? I probably need to tighten these, right? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's not what fixed it. What fixed it was me tightening these. See this right here? This top one right here? It uses an Allen wrench of size five and 30 seconds. So you're looking for an Allen wrench of five and 30 seconds. That's this one right here to tighten this one and this one. This one didn't need it as much. This one really needed it. Down here on the bottom one, I wasn't able to tighten this one until I had tightened this one up more. So I went about three times around and make sure your door is closed when you're tightening it because of the first time I did, I opened it and I tightened it and then I couldn't close my door. It wouldn't close because it had to go across this gasket. Also, make sure you push your gasket in really, really well before you do this. And then I, so what I did is I tightened it three times on here, two on here, back up here for one, down here for two more. Then I said, hey, let's give it a shot. And remember, I haven't been able to get it below 800 I think it was like 812 maybe, but this is where I'm at right now. 360 m torn and it's still going down. And I'm finally getting better um, better temperatures. It, was, it wasn't it was getting a, a good enough vacuum, so it was holding at negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is what I'm hoping continues on for my trend. We'll check in in a little bit um, and see where it's at. I'd really like to see this. I have cheese in here right now, and the cheese should be done in like eight more hours if everything goes right. If it doesn't, when I come back out here in two hours, this number will be in the 1900s. That's what keeps happening to me. So if I fixed it, this number will continue to, to drop or hold steady between 200 and 400, somewhere in there for drying capacity, drying, maximizing the drying. And if not, then it's gonna go up. If I didn't fix it, then it's gonna go up. So we will come back in two hours and double check. Hi guys, okay, so I came out and it was at the two hour point. Remember, we were just talking about that. 
and I was like so excited, super confident, and I sat there and stared. It was back up to 2200 mTOR, and it was climbing. I didn't do a video because I was close to crying, just, I'm, just like I'm close to crying right now because I'm, I've been so frustrated with this. Um, but then I was like, you know what? This isn't anything to be frustrated about. I moved. The machine has moved. It's been, it rode over 1,800 miles. I should have expected something. And my luck, I didn't check and I haven't been getting started until my warranty was out. Remember, Harvest Right has a three-year warranty. They replace anything for free. They literally help you try to fix your machine. So that was my fault, and that's okay. They did replace the gasket for free, and then I finally figured out, after all of the other things that we went through, it's my vacuum sensor. I think. <laughs> I was pretty confident on the last one. I'm not so confident now, but I, after everything else that I tested, that's what it's coming down to. So here's what I came up with after all of the things that I looked through. On my, um, my machine was getting a vacuum. I know it was getting a vacuum because my gasket line around it, if you'll remember from the first video, and I'll make sure and put a little screenshot right here of what the vacuum looked like. You can see the gasket, how it's black. It's thick. It has a vacuum. However, because the machine wasn't sensing it, the temperature wasn't going and adjusting to where it needed to be. So what happens is you have the freezing, it freezes the temp, it freezes the items and it gets really, really cold, negative 41, right? I've seen it go to negative 41, that's really cold. Then the vacuuming starts. Once it hits a certain vacuum, then the temperature starts to go up because it's like a trigger safe, right? Okay, it's, it's vacuumed enough, now we can start. Mine was hitting that vacuum, but it wasn't holding it enough. So the temperature was going up to negative three and it wouldn't go any warmer. So that's when I was like, okay, check, check, check. I know all these things. I've got all, all of the other things. All of the other things are checked. I know I don't have any leaks anywhere. It literally came down to what is wrong. And then on vacuum sensor, it was the last thing that I had. And I found this by going in through and scrolling through and combing through everything on the Harvest Right website. They have a really clear, easy to use video on their website on how to do it. However, I'm gonna do it here. So my son actually is out here and he's helping me. Thank you, Wyatt. If you wanna check him out, go to WP Missouri Outdoors. He has an awesome, awesome website. He talks about hunting, how to kill, um, how to clean things, how to cook things. He does a phenomenal job. Definitely check him out. But he helped me figure out which Allen wrench we're gonna use. My husband has all these different Allen wrenches. And we're gonna use the 1 8 Allen wrench to open up the back. Remember on the front it was a 5 16 On the back we're gonna be using the 1 8 So we just go around. First you're gonna loosen them all. I already did this one because they all are super tight. So get them in there you hear that crack. We gotta get these panels off to get to that drum where the vacuum sensor is. If you would like a nice, easy, clear video on how to just get in there and just replace the vacuum sensor without ha all of the panel stuff. I'll put the link in my description on exactly where to go because Harvest Right has a phenomenal video. Okay, so we got the back panel off. Now what we need to do is I'm gonna have my son come around here and you can see the drum and then you can see the vacuum and then you can see the sensor back there. What we have to do is we have to get the panels off so we can get in there and they come apart really, really easily. So just remember which ones you have. I'm gonna put my top over here on the side. And I'm, I'm actually, I don't think I need to get in there very much. Okay, um, so I don't need to remove the sides because what they saw, and there's, I didn't realize that there would be moths and stuff in here. So I feel like I, maybe while I have this open, I'm gonna also clean it. Um, but I'm gonna use, he said to use like a five and 16, five sixteenths um, wrench. Um, I just grabbed one of these because, oh, trying to move and everything. Anyways. So what I've done, since I've unplugged it, I'm gonna come in here and you can see this, see this green board right here? I need to get this cord off of it and then I've gotta slide this off of the vacuum. And you can see it's gonna be a little difficult because I have some foam pushing in here and I have to be careful because I don't wanna ruin this board. I wanna remove this. Okay, so I'm gonna get in here. And that just white thing, the sensor, just popped right off. It didn't need any um, pushing or anything. It just popped right out of there. And then so should the sensor too. But again, I've got that. you got to be careful as you're pulling it off. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to set this right here because I'm going to need that again in just a second. Then I'm going to use this and tighten it to the correct size. Oops, that was loosening it. And all I'm going to do is, there we go. Oops, 
Maybe I'm going the wrong way because I'm backwards. Yeah, I think I was. <laughs> I'm so awkward at this stuff. I believe in being able to do what you... There we go. Okay, so just about one revolution was enough for me to loosen it so I can pull this out. And I'm just hand unscrewing it. It's actually going really easily. Okay, so as you can see, this is the sensor. I can feel that they put something sticky on it. I'm gonna have to ask my husband what that is. It might be some kind of a sealant, but the Teflon that they put on, is the same that they had on this one and it's half gone. So I'm probably gonna go get a Q-tip and clean out the inside of that because I have to put this new one in. And what they did is he recommended that you do three wraparounds. Um, they sent it to me with Teflon tape on it, but I noticed that when I got it, that it was like kind of gummed up acting. So I brought my own Teflon tape out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually wrap it myself three times, um, just so I know that it was done three times and that there's nothing on it. Um, and he said very, the gentleman in that video, he was very easy to understand. Like I said, go check it out. I've got a link to it in the description, um, just in case I'm not very clear. And <laughs> I'm panting, I had to go out to the garage and get some more of those tools, some of the more Allen wrenches. Um, but the biggest thing that I really liked that this guy did in his video for Harvest Right was he was very clear and very concise. Um, he explained that if you do more than three wrap arounds, it's too much and it can leak. If you don't do three, if you do less, it could cause a leak. So he even showed exactly how to do it. So what I'm gonna do that is I'm also gonna clean this out and then I'm gonna um, get this wrapped and I'll show you all that in just a second. Okay, thank you, thank you. So Wyatt got my, the extra te Teflon off for me. Um, I made sure that this is cleaned out in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the new one on, the new Teflon on. And they had yellow, I'm using white. And I'm just putting it on, I just wanna make sure it's all, all the threads are covered. You wanna make sure that you don't have any like one. So Wyatt just reminded me that I need to make sure and do it nice and tight. I don't deal with Teflon very much, so thank you, Wyatt. So I'm at two. I'm going to go one more. And I'm kind of putting about 50% tension on this to make sure I can see the threads in there. You see the threads? I'm pulling it tight enough that the threads, it's actually kind of conforming to the threads. And so there we go. We have three. And I'm just going to pull like that, put it back in. And then I'm gonna smooth it in so that they're all nice and sealed in there really nicely. I wanna make sure that your opening isn't covered. Okay, and this is the part that's threaded. I'm not gonna worry about these little extras. All right, so here we go. Next part that he was very clear about is you can kind of see on here, you have these four prongs. If you look at this center thing, there's like a black pokey. Um, it's kind of like a button or a nipple or something on it kind of poking off. That is actually really important that you get it lined up in here and it's really hard to see. You can kind of see it's right there at the top, right there at the 12 o'clock position. So I wanna make sure that they're gonna slide on together and so they have to be in the same position. And so they're just gonna kinda, of, let me see if I can, I always mess these kinds of things up. Okay, so it was a little bit of a push for me to get it in. It wasn't as easy as it was to, okay. So for the brand new one, it's a little bit snugger. So I'll, rather than thinking I don't have it right in the right place, I'm gonna, when I get those connected in there, I'm gonna need to make sure and push them. So it's gotta go like this, which means I'm gonna need this one to start like this. So I'm gonna set this right here. Okay, and I'm gonna push it down here and I put it in place. That feels right. Now I should be able to, yeah, oh my goodness, that did circle right in there, easy. Okay. All right, so it's just about to where I can't hand tighten it anymore. So I'm gonna do this, but what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna double check to see where that nipple is. Looks like it's right here. And again, I need it to be facing that way. So I've got it hand tightened, and remember, when we took it out, it was almost one and a half revolutions, and then I could loosen it. So what I'm at right now is about a halfway point. So I'm gonna tighten it and see if I can tighten it two more and see if it's gonna put that nipple down in the correct position and have it be tightened the way I need it to be. I'm gonna try just a little bit more to make sure it's hand tightened. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, now I'm going to go one, that's a half. <laughs> there we go. You can hear my husband in there singing. There's a two. Let's see. Oh, maybe that's my oldest son in there. Little fun little announcement while I'm doing this. My old, I mean, you know, I'm going to go a little bit tighter. My oldest son just got his mission call. He's going to Brazil. He's serving in September. So I'm really excited for that. I love seeing my children put their love for the gospel into their lives. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit tighter. Here's the lip right here. And again, I need it facing about that way. Probably close to parallel with the... Okay, it's getting kind of snug. I need it out just a little bit more. So it did need more than a one and a half. Let me feel that nipple right there. Let's see if that'll work. Okay. So we're going to try and put this on. Finding the nipple right there. It might, be, it might not be enough. Is it? I can't see it. So that means I need to, okay. Because of the angle of that, I need it to go a little bit tighter. terrible, wouldn't it? Get it this far and break it. Oh my goodness. Now these suckers aren't cheap. 150 bucks. Too bad I couldn't have tightened it on there like that. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I didn't have it at the right angle still. And this foam is actually really nice and hard. Come on, go for me, please. Because you like me. Just pretend to like me. I think that feels like, yeah. There we go. I'm gonna push that foam in because I want that in. There we go, yes. Yes! It's in! Woohoo! Uh-oh, I gotta get that white thingy. There it is. Okay, we're almost there. So this comes around this way and it's gonna clip in here. Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness. And y'all, I'm just gonna be honest. When people said Missouri was humid, they weren't lying, but I love it. But whew, I'm sweating and I'm just in the garage and it's a rainy day. Okay, I'm just gonna check and make sure that's tight. Oh, you guys, I hope it works. I'm a little nervous. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this all back together. I'm gonna put the top back on. I might wipe, I'm gonna vacuum out probably the bottom a little bit, but overall, it's not that bad. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. So I'm gonna put it all together, um, button it back up. Uh, I got two of the 1 8 inch Allen wrenches for my son and I to put this back together. And then we're gonna try it and I will definitely update you in just a minute. Well, it'll be more than a minute because those little screws at the back were exhausting. All right, we'll be back and I can't wait to tell you if it worked or not. See you in a minute. Okay, so far so good. We got down to 466 mTOR and I'm watching this temperature to see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone through a lot. Um, it's been hectic, it's been crazy. I've gotten one load finished in the last, since so since April and it's the end of June right now. So we're looking at three months. Um, and if you have a freeze dryer and it's been sitting for any length of time, you know how frustrating this is. You know that this is exhausting. Um, I have been in tears 
uh, because I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. I've done everything. I've employed my husband. I've had my kids helping me. Um, I've done everything to try and diagnose it by myself. I did everything. I finally, finally broke down and uh, contacted um, customer service of Harvest Right because like I said, I've already done the whole, um, I already knew that I was outside of warranty. So I wanted to do as much as I possibly could of self-diagnosing my machine before I called them because I did not want to waste time going through all of the steps like I've seen a lot of people do and have them do, have me do the same thing. So when I got on a call, so what I did is I, I submitted a ticket. Um, I could have called, but I don't have time for that right now. So I submitted a ticket. I got an email from a really nice lady in customer service about two weeks later, and which again, I, I'm so grateful that I've been as busy as I've been because I would not have been able to um, keep it together if I had to wait two weeks. Um, I've been doing like girls camps. Um, we've been participating in, in boys camps. We've been doing all kinds of things around the house. So this was, um, it was, it was okay for me. Uh, if it was any other time when I wasn't super swamped, I would have been like calling in a couple hours. I haven't heard from you. So, um, that being said, this has been a terrific lesson in patience and I'm grateful um, for the chance that I've had to actually learn this. Um, so the, the lady got a hold of me and she said, um, because you're outside of warranty, because in the, you know, submit a ticket, you have to put your serial number. And, um, so I submitted that and it does have your date, uh, the date that your machine was created. Mine was created, uh, or it sent out March 19th, March of 2019. So that's, I'm past the three year mark for the warranty. Um, which again, like I said, totally fine. I have not had any problems with my machine. So, I mean, the fact that I finally am having to like the totally, I'm like, seriously, this is fine. Um, so anyway, so I got a call from her and she was like, or I got an email from her and she said, here's the link. You need to pay the $45 to have the diagnosing and to work through this. And I was like, okay, sweet. I can pay 45 bucks. What I was thinking was that it was going to be $45 every time I talked to him. That's not the case. It's $45 until this, until the situation gets resolved. Um, so I paid and then I got a Calendly, Calendly, Calendly. It's like a, a reservation or an appointment schedule automatic and it sent me a time for that day. And I couldn't do it that day. I already had plans for work. Um, it wasn't something, so I just put on there, I need to cancel this and reschedule and I, it was really easy to reschedule. I picked a time for the next day and then I put on there why. I was like, I have to work. I have to be above the machine when we diagnose it. You know, just, I can't do that. But then that's all it was. Um, it didn't say that he was gonna call me. It didn't say that I was gonna call them. Um, I missed the call when he finally did call me, um, and then he called me again, which was fine. Um, the time zones were a little off. He's central, or excuse me, he's mountain. They were mountain standard time, and I'm in central. Um, because remember, I moved, yeah. And um, so that was a little confusing, um, but it was fine, because once we finally got on the phone, um, I went through everything that I'd done. Again, that's in the videos that I just went through. Everything I did to try and diagnose what was going on. I've done every, I had done everything. And he was, he was, he was like, oh, that's actually really good that you've already gone through this because you just, you just saved us hours and hours of time, which as you know, I'm always trying to do things myself and I'm trying to, um, save time. I don't have the time. I've got six kids. I'm working, I'm homeschooling. I'm working seven different businesses right now. Um, I have two callings at church. Um, I've got stuff that I'm doing, right? Like, um, not two official callings, but I've got an official calling at church and then things that I help with. So I'm busy, 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 busy. Um, which is great. I mean, I, I love being busy. Um, so, so <laughs> dang, if he didn't tell me, um, that my software was too old, which it's, I mean, yeah, I have version 4.1.6. It's the old one. And he was like, well, maybe you need to update it. And I said, I'm not updating my software. You're going to have to find the other thing that's wrong with this machine because it works fine. I need to know what's wrong with it. So he said that the, machine, the the version of software is actually older than he has been there. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I can tell you what I can do with it. And there are videos on the website that actually deal with my software age, you know, a little bit older around that age between three and five. And it, you know, the secret buttons and all that stuff. And it, it walks you through it. There's videos on the website, uh, on the Harvest Right website. And they're really good. They're really easy to follow. Very clear. No one's stumbling around like I do. Like, um, uh, uh. So it was good. It's a really good, it was, it, that's a really good experience on there to self-diagnose if you have the older software. 
Um, he asked me if I wanted to update. I said absolutely not. I would like to avoid updating if at all possible. I've never had any problems with my software. I get to choose like how long I want to do for my final dry time. Um, I, I don't want to change it. You know, why fix what's not broken, right? Um, so then I had where um, he asked me that and then he said, okay, I need to put you on hold. So he put me on hold and I was thinking he's going to come back and tell me the only thing I can do is update the software. Well, he came back and said he spoke with someone who's been there a lot longer than him. A senior tech is what he called that, or what he called this woman. And the woman said, um, my software is hard on pumps. And I was like, okay, I mean, whatever. I mean, I've never heard that before. I've had the same standard pump the entire time that I've had the machine, so for three years. Um, and I have put it through the ringer. I mean, I've run that thing 24-7. I... I, in fact, the only time it has not been running was literally when we announced that we were moving. There was two months period where we um, didn't run it and then I ran it for the two more months until we sold the house. And then it didn't run from that time until um, March. And then I got one batch out of it and then after that it wasn't. So here's what was wrong with my machine. And this is exactly how I explained it to the gentleman that was helping me. I would, I would put in my trays and I would push start like normal, right? Hit start, non-liquid, liquid, doesn't matter. Frozen, pre-frozen, doesn't matter. It would start. It would go into the freezing process. Easy, right? About 10 hours, 10 and a half, 11 hours, depending on what I had picked. I think it was 11 hours. And then it would go into the, into the drying, but I call it the vacuum freeze, the freeze vacuum. Um, this is where it's still in the freezing mode, but the vacuum turns on. This is usually at about five hours, about halfway through the, dry, the freezing cycle. So the vacuum turns on. My pump that I just had, the last pump that was running great, always running great, ran, um, it would get down to, it got down to 167 mTOR really fast, like within five minutes, maybe three minutes. I mean, it was fast. And then the temperature would be down like negative 26, negative 30, somewhere in there. And then according to my logs, what would happen is it would hit, it would hold it for about 25, 30 minutes, and then it would start to go up. My mTOR would start to go up. The temperature would attempt to go up, but it would stop at negative two. It would never go higher than negative two. Um, so the mTOR would go up. It would you know, go up to 500, go back down to 400, go back up to 600 go down to 550, go up to 900, and then that temperature would stall at negative two and my mTOR would go all the way to 2400 plus. Never really hit out at 2500, but it would, it would hover in there between 2400 and 2500. Um, and this is consistent. So, you know, I was thinking there's gotta be a leak, right? There's gotta be a leak. But there, how, why, why, how could there be a leak if my gasket is tight? It's gotta, it's gotta vacuum, what's going on? So the tech told me that after looking at the logs and speaking with the senior tech, um, that what was happening was my vacuum was worn out. My vacuum pump was worn out. What does that mean? He explained to me that it can get down, it can do the job and get down to the mTOR, but maintaining it at that, at that capacity was too much for it. And it starts to give out about 20 to 30 minutes. That's what it's doing. And he said, now we're going to test it. What I want you to do is I want you to watch it and see if it starts doing it between 30 minutes and two hours. If it's under two hours, the vacuum pump is worn out and it's done. If it starts, the mTOR starts to go up. Okay. Um, and I was like, okay. And he said, if it's after two hours, it's something else. So I was like, okay. He said, email me. Cause we'd already been on the phone for about 45 minutes at this point, And I am not a phone person at all. Don't like the phone, prefer to text or email just because it's just too long. It's just too long of a conversation. By this time, I'd already been frustrated. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to be on the phone anymore. But he said, email me and let me know if, if what happens. Okay. So I sat down, I sat down y'all. And I was like, <sighs> I start, I was watching it and I was watching it and it went down to 382, 381, 382, 381, 380, 384, 379, 389, 378, 397, 398. Then it went up to 450. Then it, I mean, and it was creeping. It would go down a little bit. I'd be like, okay, wait, wait, maybe it's fine. It's fluctuating, right? It'd go down a little bit and then it'd go back up. 
it finally went above 500 and it wouldn't go back down below 500 after 25 minutes. It was literally 25 minutes. And I, so I messaged him and I said, this is what it's doing. And, um, dang, if I wasn't frustrated because my poor pump, I've got a loyalty, I've got a commitment issue. I love, I mean, I commit big time. I'm, I name my, my machines. I name my little parts. I name, we've got rabbits running around in our yard and their names, Timmy and Tommy. And I don't know whose rabbits they are. Like I, this is, I, I get attached to things. It's really weird. But anyways, my pump, his name's Mr. Pump. I know creative. Um, apparently he was out. So I was like, okay, I'll try this. So I messaged the gentleman and he, he messaged me back and he said, okay, let's, um, if you want to order a pump, this is what I, you know, I would recommend you get a pump. And I was like, okay. And he said, which pump do you want to order? And I said, you know, do you, do you take commission? Because if you don't take commission, I'll just order online. And he said, no, no, I, we don't get commission. Tech, tech department doesn't get commission. I said, okay, I'll just order online. So I ordered online and I got a standard pump because I love my standard pump. So I ordered a standard pump and I got the new cord, the new hose thing. Um, and, uh, cause I haven't replaced it since the one in 2019. I mean, I have not had any problems with my setup. So I replaced it. I got them. They came in four days cause I had the weekend that came from FedEx. It was dropped off. Um, I hooked everything up and my husband helped me. I put in the new oil, got everything set up and I started stressing out because I plugged it in and did everything I was supposed to do, set it in there, and it went down to 382, back up to 505. The temperature went from a negative two to a 26, back down to a negative six, up to a 75, down to a negative seven, up to 505 mTOR. I mean, it was all over the place. I was like, are you menstruating? Like, what are you doing? Why are we going all over the place? Um, but it did it. I mean, it, it actually got into the drying cycle. It got into the final dry. I'm about to pull my load of eggs and cheese out right now. I, and I tested them before I added the more dry time. Y'all, I'm about to start crying. This has been insane. And it's at 383 mTOR at 114 degrees. Yeah. So I wore my pump out because I used it too much. This is after replacing all of the things. Did you watch the videos? Replacing all of the things. Um, I'm relieved. I hope that is all it is. I hope that's what it is. I'm taking it one load at a time. Um, because right now we're in a situation where, you know, foods, food shortages are happening. Food, um, prices are going up. Um, yeah. I'm just, and I'm trying to teach my kids, this is what we do. And if you've had a chance um, to check out, there's, you know, cause you can't freeze dry bacon. You can't freeze dry butter. There's certain things um, I'm adding to my site. I'm adding to my website and I'm adding to my videos um, other ways to, to save food outside of freeze drying. Cause freeze drying is not the only option for, um, for preserving your food. It's my favorite option, but it's not the only option. Um, so I'm about to pull out eggs and cheese. Check out my videos for the eggs and cheese, how to do those. Um, I've done those before for you. They're terrific. I love them. And yeah, like, let me know how you're doing, but that's been my ordeal. Um, it's been, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. This Saturday we are, my friends and I, um, are cutting up or we're butchering like 85 chickens, meat chickens. Um, I'm going to be doing chickens. I'm going to be doing chicken broth. I'll do some videos on those, but I'm hoping I'm back now. I'm hoping that things are back to normal and that we can get things going. Um, thank you for sticking with me. If you have a chance, uh, I have a lot of posts on my website. Check out freezedryingmama.com because I, I'm going through a lot of these things I like burritos. I mean, there's, there's directions how to do things. There's reconstitution recipes in there. Um, there's recipes like my spaghetti sauces on that website. Uh, go and check it out. This is a journey that we're all on and we all should be on it together. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm doing my best to get to them, but this has been stressful. It's, and I feel you. If, if you just got your freeze dryer and it's like you bought it and you got it to your house and then it still isn't working, I feel you. This has been very frustrating. Um, it's, again, it's not Harvest Right fault. This just is what it is, right? Like this is part of owning an inexpensive machine. They're finicky. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, hang in there. It'll get working. And once it is, you'll be able to get your food running and going really well. <laughs> Let me know what you're freeze drying in the comments. Hit subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notifications when I put up a new video because I'll be putting up some new ones now. Um, thanks for sticking with me, guys. 
Uh, I hope you are healthy and safe wherever you're at. Yeah, okay, let's start freeze drying again. <laughs> I've been having withdrawals. All right, thanks guys, we'll talk to you later.